Hey guys, it's Heather here at Lars. Today we are going to be talking about some of the more serious illnesses that we are seeing in reptiles, specifically bearded dragons. If you guys would like to learn more, definitely stay tuned and remember to hit that subscribe button. Today I have my friend Phoenix with me and uh, Phoenix has what we believe at least he's showing symptoms of uh, what we call adenovirus or atadenovirus. Um, this is something that is becoming more prevalent in bearded dragons. The, the numbers are actually staggering. In a recent study that was done in 2020 over in Japan, um, they were doing a test on bearded dragons that had adenovirus, and they've been finding that 56% of the dragons that were tested, um, tested positive for adenovirus. Now in the US, we don't have um, statistics for numbers like that. Uh, adenovirus has been found in wild populations in Australia. The prevalence of adenovirus in bearded dragons is becoming such that a dragon can actually have adenovirus and you wouldn't even know about it. So adenovirus can affect the system in a couple of different ways. Uh, it can lead to intestinal issues can definitely lead to liver problems. It can lead to increased chances of contracting or not being able to get rid of coccidia and all sorts of different intestinal parasites. And then there are the neurological symptoms of adenovirus as well, um, such as the stargazing. Now, one of the reasons why we think this guy has adenovirus is because of the way that he moves. Another illness that we are seeing a lot in bearded dragons is muscular dystrophy. Now, muscular dystrophy in bearded dragons acts a lot the same way that it does in people. And the most prevalent outward symptom is loss of control of limbs. So you'll see um, bearded dragons with muscular dystrophy doing like a ballerina pose where they kind of have, you know, one leg off to the front, one leg to the side. They can have both of their legs down to the side. In advanced stages of muscular dystrophy, bearded dragons will not be able to right themselves. If they are flipped onto their back, they will need help with that. Um, that poses a huge risk because their systems are made for their bodies to be flat like Mr. Phoenix here. And uh, so when they get on their back, it actually impedes the way that their respiratory system works and it makes it hard for them to breathe. I'm still working to see if I can try to figure out how to get Mr. Phoenix to show you what he is doing because I really want you guys to see this. You can tell with Phoenix that he is underweight. He is very low energy. He is not acting like a normal bearded dragon should. As adenovirus progresses, dragons like Phoenix here will have a harder and harder time with their entire digestive system. That means uh, shutting down with eating where they'll need supportive care and syringe feeding. Uh, that means diarrhea in their system. You know, one of the things that I always tell everyone is look at the poop. These animals can't talk. And so you really need to be able to pay attention to all of the outward signs of illnesses. And poop is actually one of the biggest things that tells us what is going on with bearded dragons and with a lot of different reptiles that we care for at the rescue. So diarrhea is never a good sign. Now, while diarrhea doesn't only mean adenovirus because it can mean, uh, you know, something for uh, cryptosporidius as well, where you're not seeing um, food that's 
uh, fully digested coming out of the other end. It can also just mean that you're feeding them the wrong food and that they're getting uh, way too much water content and not enough nutrient content. So all sorts of different reasons for a, a watery stool in bearded dragons. But guys, uh, you know, you're listening to me and I'm, I'm doing this video on different illnesses and showing you uh, examples of, you know, dragons with uh, adenovirus and muscular dystrophy and talking about all of these other problems. We are not a replacement for a veterinarian. The only way to diagnose uh, illnesses like this is to get your animal to a veterinarian to have a full workup done for adenovirus. Uh, what they're going to do is they're going to do a mouth swab. They're also going to swab the vent. And then it is very helpful if you can get a fecal as well. Um, and besides that, it's always a good idea to get some baseline blood work done for your bearded dragon. We are learning so much more about these species and exactly what is going on out there in the pet industry. I can tell you that a lot of cases of coccidia and adenovirus and muscular dystrophy and things like that are coming from breeding facilities. Either the parent is infected, the, the female or the male, or uh, the babies are infected because the mother can actually pass some of these illnesses down to babies. A lot of babies don't have a chance to make it past the first 90 days. You know, we're seeing animals that are born in renal failure. We, we are seeing baby bearded dragons with severe gout. Um, we do have another bearded dragon right now that we're caring for uh, that does have gout. He's getting better very, very, very slowly. Um, but that's something that's probably never going to go away from him. And he will always have those issues. And you will always, if you adopt him, be fighting to make sure that he has enough water in his diet to help flush some of those crystals out of his joints. There is just all kinds of stuff that can go wrong uh, with bearded dragons. And, um, you know, Mr. Phoenix is a very, very pretty color here. But again, these guys are being bred for their colors and their patterns and all of the uh, different morphs of bearded dragons. You know, if you can find them and they've got stripes on their body or like, uh, you know, you guys might be able to see here that Phoenix actually has some lavender uh, coloring on the back of him. This guy is gorgeous, don't get me wrong. But at some point, we have to ask ourselves, is the breeding of these animals, to be able to breed them for their color and pattern, worth the risk to their health? It's a strong ethical question. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, there are still some people out there in the world who uh, really want these animals around as show pieces. And it's really at a disadvantage to the species. Um, bearded dragons are very near and dear to my heart. Speaking from someone who's got over 15 years experience working with, handling, and helping to treat the illnesses of bearded dragons, I can tell you that what we know today is nothing compared to what we knew even six years ago. And the prevalence of what we're seeing in all of these illnesses is getting worse and worse. Well, I was not able to capture some of the movements that I've been seeing out of the spirited dragon on video when I recorded the initial footage. I was able to get some additional video of him because we have started syringe feeding. He is not eating and drinking on his own. So I'm going to show you guys that right now. Come on, little buddy. Hey. Bud. Ah! 
At this point, it's really hard to tell what is going on with this little guy. If it's muscular dystrophy, if it's adenovirus, uh, we really don't know what's going on. Um, and again, we're not veterinarians. And so, um, you know, I can guess all I want based on all of the experience that I have uh, working with these animals and getting to know some of the illnesses and being familiar with the signs of these illnesses. But at the end of the day, we need to get this guy to a veterinarian so that we can do some blood work and do some fecals and try to figure out what is going on with him. Um, it's such a shame because he is such a beautiful dragon and um, we know that he is very, very sick and he could possibly be sick with something that is incurable. So it's really, really important to be able to see the signs of what is going on with these animals, be able to recognize when something is wrong with them. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned a couple of things. If you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on our Facebook page or via email. And as always, I hope you guys have a fabulous day.